Hello everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for another opportunity he has given to us to be able to break the bread of life together. And you know that this bread of life will break together in fellowship is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, it said, our fellowship being believers, born again Christians, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. Jesus speaking as God man in John chapter 4. Jesus said very clearly, he said God is a spirit and he seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And then after the death, the burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul came speaking by the spirit of God. And Paul said very clearly in Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. He said, we, born again believers in Christ Jesus, are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and we put no confidence at all in the flesh. Praise God. Now, what all of that means is that born again believers are the fulfillment of the Father's desire to have spirit worshippers. Amen. Now, quickly, before I hit the ground running, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. We have loads of teachings on YouTube that will be a blessing both to you and to your loved ones. Amen. You know, and those teachings are free. So please just go to YouTube and type Apostle Victor James and press that subscription button. You know, it will make me glad. I mean, I'll be so encouraged to know you've done that. Praise God. Amen. All right. You know, we won't get on unless I say it again. Welcome to Experience Jesus. With AVJ, Apostle Victor James. Now, there is something very unique, specific, that the Lord put in my heart for us to break as bread, you know, on this episode. And I trust the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that it is going to minister life and refreshment to all of us. Amen. So wherever you're watching from, whether from America, Canada, Australia, China, uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, you know, Europe, England, South Africa, any part of the world, you know, I'm, I'm excited to have you join. Amen. <laughs> All right. Um, as I start, I like to start by saying there are two uh, uh, major fundamentals, two major fundamentals. Uh, demands of the divine of God in the New Testament. There are two major things that God requires, demands of every born again Christian as New Testament saints. Two. And these two uh, is not something God demands because he wants to work for them or look for them or seek for them. No, they are things that he had given to us he gave them to us. So he himself is demanding them of us. Are you seeing him? I mean, this God is too much. He didn't leave us in a limbo to go and seek them out, to look for them. He gave us these two things. These two things God has given them to us. But he demands them of us as New Testament saints, as his children. Are you seeing that? So it's very important. So there are, that's why I said there are two things or two demands of the new testament by the divine by god you know and what are these two things one is to walk in love w a l k walk in love it's a demand god demands that we walk in love you know it's it, it, it's it's more like a commandment you are commanded to walk in love when you stop walking in love or you refuse to walk in love, you are breaking the law of the commandment of the New Testament. The law of the commandment of the New Testament is to walk in love. It's a demand. And God gave us his love for, us to, for him to be able to demand that we walk in it. And the second demand as we will see that these things are scriptural, is to live by faith. The Bible said the just shall live. But if he wants to live, it has to be by faith. 
He's already justified. He's a child of God. He belongs to God. But the Bible said if he wants to live, if he wants to stay in authority, if he wants to stay a victor, if he wants to uh, uh, live above the conditions of this world, he has to do it by faith. Anything outside of faith will spell failure for the child of God in this world. What, no, matter, no matter how anointed a man is, no matter how beautifully looking he or she is, no matter their qualifications in life or social status, you know, no matter how prayerful you are, if you choose not to live by faith, which is a demand for the just, for the saints in the New Testament, I'm sorry to say, you will keep struggling with defeat, with failure, with pain, with shame, with things that are not of God. So you see, these two things are what God sets as the things that governs living God's glorious life in the New Testament. Walking in love, living by faith. Woo! Amanaya! To walk in love, to live by faith. Are you seeing that? You walk in love, you live by faith. Watch this. Let's start with um, Galatians chapter 5 in verse number 6. NIV translation. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 of the NIV translation. Let's, let's look at what the Bible says. This is very important. You know, because you, you find that a lot of Christians are struggling. They are struggling in life. And not just struggling. There are other Christians who have been struggling for too long. God told Moses in Deuteronomy, he said, when a man struggles for too long, he said, it is because a man has got into error or is under a curse. Your struggle, our struggle should never be for too long. Now, it doesn't mean that we will not have series of struggle. That means series of challenges, series of temptations. Because the Bible said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse, are you seeing it? Diverse, many or different kinds not just one condition spanning for almost forever no god does not want one particular condition to span almost forever for a child of god because jesus has paid the price for every one of them are you getting it but if a man or woman that is a child of god a born again christian refuses to walk by faith or I mean, walk in love and live by faith. There is something very clear. The Bible said is happening to that person. He said the person is blind. And the person is in darkness. That means the enemy has surrounded and taken over that person. It doesn't mean the person has lost his or her salvation. It's just that they can't find their direction anymore in the realm of the spirit. Are you seeing that? This is why you must walk in love. This is why you must not let the devil control your life. Don't let hurt, hurt, don't let somebody's action determine your walk of love or your living by faith. Are you seeing that? It's very important because if you do, you will be causing yourself to live a life of disadvantage as a Christian, as a child of God. It doesn't matter whatever the thing is. I don't care what the thing is. The issue is, no matter the issue, this is the demand of divine life. It's a, divine, it's a demand of divine life. To walk in love and to live by faith. As we are grado, see. Let me use this too. <laughs> can, can you? No worry, I'll pick that up. Look at it. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, the NIV translation. The Bible said, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision uh, has any value. You, you know, a lot of people, because they do not understand and they are not living according to the demands of this, our eternal father, the demand of the divine in the New Testament. Yeah? They have slipped into religious activities. Living what God demands. What God expects. And these things that God demands is not something he's asking us to seek out to become. No. These are the things he has given to us. 
He's giving us his love and he's giving us his faith. Two things. Very powerful forces. Love and faith. God has given them to us. So when a person, a child of God, a New Testament believer in Christ Jesus, refuses <clears throat> excuse me, to walk in love or live by faith, they will result into circumcision. Um, all circumcision. The, what, what I mean by that is that they will fall back into religious activities. That's why you see that some people, all they just do is, when the church wants to cook, they are there, running up and down. Cooker. I don't know who employed them as, uh, and give them and give them cooking ministry. And he said, this is my calling. Which calling? Jesus told Martha, he said, you matter about too many things. Mary has found the right path. What are you doing? Some people just like activities. They think activities is Christianity. You know? To go about, you know? It's the same thing with some ministers. Some ministers wake up in the morning and take off. Only to come back at night. Except you have job, an external job, work, you know, that you have to go to apart from ministry. You know, that's, that's fair enough. That's good. But some people just go minister. They go about, you know, all the day. You know, and then come back in the night. They are tired. I, I look at is that are you are you called at all, or do, or, or do you understand your calling? Because if you understand your calling as a minister, your your place is to give yourself to prayer and the ministry of the word. You see, the word is a ministry to to learn the word. It's a ministry. And to be able to communicate it is a ministry. That is the place of a minister. Not to go ab about around town. They find you everywhere. A pastor. A man of God. A woman of God. You are everywhere. In every occasion. In every meeting. I say because I'm, I have so much demand. You know, that's why I have diary to know. Uh, my, my diary is so filled up. Look, those are just religious uh, you know, whatever. The man is just trying to excite himself. You know? The man is just trying to excite himself. I have a couple of friends like that. They want to let me know that their diary is so busy. They have diary that is so busy. I just laugh. I just laugh. But when it comes to the word of God, they are not sound. Are you seeing that? So, he says, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. This is not, he's not talking to unbelievers. He's not talking to people who are not born again. He said, once you are a born again Christian, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. Religious activities, night VG, is not, look, night VG has no value. There is no value in doing night VG. Because they give night VG now all kinds of names. Holy Ghost night, power night, miracle night, prophetic night. All, they have no value. They don't add to you. They don't, you know, you don't grow by them. You don't grow by going to night vigil. I'm telling you. As once you come into Christ, circumcision or all circumcision place no value at all. Uh, I, I woke up 2, 2 a.m. in the night to pray. It's good. Thank God for your prayer. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 12 midnight. Thank God for you praying as of that time. But it does not have any value outside of this truth. Watch. He said, for in Christ, I'm not the one that he said, look at the Bible. He said, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith. Your faith is what counts. Your faith is what counts. And that faith is expressed. Expressing itself through love. Are you seeing the things that count? Faith and love. Love and faith. Not all these razzmatazz and Christian jamboree that people are doing. Not all these, um, uh, what do I call it? Um, uh, 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 religious activities. You, you know, you see a woman who has been at the market, market woman. You know, she's been, she's been under the sun throughout the day. You know, just to sell her, her market. You know, and then by the time she closes, around between six and seven in the night, she's heading for night vigil. 
Because the night vigil is starting by 10. I ask myself, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Who bewitched you? Who, who cursed you? Who swore? Who swore that you will never think straight? Who? What are you looking for in night vigil? You know, a lot of people do. A lot of ministers don't like me because I speak against night vigil. And I'm going to continue to speak against it. You know? Uh, they said, look, don't talk like that. Paul and Silas, 12 midnight, they pray. Go and check. After that 12 midnight, they never do it. They, they never did it again. They never prayed at 12 midnight anymore. Because God gave us his beloved sleep. The reason they prayed at 12 midnight was because they were locked up in prison. And in prison, prison is not a seven-star hotel. There's no good bed there. So there's no way they could enjoy their sleep. So they decided to make good of their condition. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Not that you, you are not in prison. You are not arrested by the police or the, 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 the army, the military. You know, nobody is putting you in any lockdown anywhere. You know, yet you carry your own self of your own volition. You know, by yourself. Ah, denying yourself sleep in the night. Oh God, something is wrong. Something is wrong. He gave that his beloved sleep. That's what he gives to his beloved. Your life does not consist, your Christian life does not consist in any drama at all. What God demands of you is faith and love. Or love and faith. Are you seeing that? Chai. I wish there's a way I can really drive this into you very well. But I trust that the Holy Ghost is doing that. Because that's his job. He's the helper. He's the one who helps us to know these things. So you see, he said, in Christ Jesus, inside Jesus Christ, religious activities are, you know, don't matter. Uh, somebody say, well, don't tell me like that. Uh, me, I go, I, I give things to the poor. I, I give to the poor. I, I make sure that I take care of the poor. Thank God for you taking care of the poor. It is good to take care of the poor. It is good to visit the, the those, um, uh, eh? the orphanage. It's good to visit the orphanage. You know, you go and visit the orphans and then take care of them. It is good to even visit the people who are sick in the hospital. He said, but that's not Christianity. That's a religious activity. That's what James says. He said, if you say you are religious, he didn't say if you say you are a Christian, a born again Christian. He said, if you say you are religious, you, have relig you like religion. He said, then the proof of religion is to do those things. But when it comes to in Christ, two things is love and faith. I think somewhere in the book of James, oh, I wish I can get it, you know, or if you can look for it for me. If you say you are religious, true religion, that's what he said. You can just type true religion and then you can find, you can get it. Because I want to show you something. Christianity is not religion. It's not a religious activity. You know, like some Christians are trying to compete with Muslims. Because Muslims are fasting so, so, so time. Some Christians are going to fast. What are you doing? What are you doing? They, they have not been taught what is demanded of us by God, which is to walk in love and to live by faith. Are you seeing that? Look at this. In James chapter 1, verse 27, he said, Religion, uh, put, um, put uh, what was it called? King James. I will still come back to this NIV. He said, Pure religion and undefiled before God, and the Father is this. This is religion. This is not Christianity. If you want to do religious activities before God Almighty, for God to see that you are practicing religious things. He said, this is it. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That is religious activities. Go and visit fatherless often. Put that NIV again. Put it in NIV. Watch. This is very important. He said, religion, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. That is a religious activity. If you want to practice religion, God said religion that God accepts. It's not the one you bow down on the, on the floor. You hit your head on the ground. God does not look at that one. It's not the one you kneel down because then you lift up your two hands. You want everybody to know you are religious. God does not look at that one. It's not the one you go and block road. You know, you say you are doing prayer. Or you carry megaphone early in the morning. Start making noise and disturbing people. 
God does not look at that kind of a religious activities. No. He said, if you want to do any religious thing, the one that God looks at and God is pleased with, without, that is pure and faultless, he said, is to, take, is to look after orphans and widows and those who are in distress. You see, but, excuse me, Christianity is not a religious activity or practice. It's not religious. There's no religion in Christianity. In Christ, the life in Christ is love and faith. The life in Christ is love and faith. The life in Christ is love and faith. Did you get that? So go back to that Galatians that we first looked at before. Look at it again. He said, for in Christ Jesus. For in, are you seeing the two? It, they, are dif, it, they are different. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 is different from James chapter 1 verse 27. James chapter 1 verse 27 are for religious people. You know, people that want to practice religious activity like the Jews. God said, you want to do religious things? All right. The one I like, religious activities that I like, you know, that's why a man can be a, an unbeliever. He's not born again, yet he can do religious things. God said, the one I like, you want to do religious things. You don't want to be born again, Abby. You don't want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't want to die and come to heaven. But you want to do religious things. But the ones I like, the religious things I like, is to visit the orphan. Take care of widow. Go to hospital and help people. That's good. Well, it doesn't mean that the person is coming to heaven. If he dies. For you to die and make heaven, you got to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So you see, Christianity is and religion are two different things. Are you seeing that? Praise God. Thank you, precious Father. Two different things. So, for in Christ Jesus, that's what he said, neither circumcision, that is the religious practice of the Jews, nor all circumcision has any value. Does it have any value? They don't have any value at all. They don't hold nothing. Nothing. They don't hold nothing. He said, the only thing, I'm not the one that is saying it, my opinion does not count. Look at it. The only thing that counts is faith. Expressing itself through love. Do you know it is possible for you to visit the orphanage, take care of them, have so many widows you know there's a man that you sometimes he comes on tv he shows how many widows he's taking care of about 100 widows he will share money to them and then give them things you know which is good religious activities you know and then he will go into hospital to go and visit people who are in the hospital and they can't pay their medical bills sometimes he helps them to pay their bills which is good lovely god said that's the one he likes but such a man such a man if he lacks love, if he lacks love, if he lacks walking in love, everything he is done or he is doing, they are counted by God as zero, as nothing, as though he has not done anything. Someone say, hey, Vijay, is that true? Let's see. So that you won't say, you won't, you won't, you won't think it's my thought, it's my thinking. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 1 to 3, put this uh, 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 NIV, my mom. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Look at what the Bible says. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, and I don't have love, are you getting that? Because when you see some Christians, the way they pray, especially in Nigeria, Nigerians can pray. Look, if prayer can carry a country from a particular continent and take it to another continent and exchange that other country's continent with Nigeria, Nigerians and their praying pattern would have carried Nigeria physically out of the continent of Africa straight to the continent of america are you seeing what i'm saying 
I have not seen a country that prays like Nigeria. Yet, they are the worst off. They are the most poor, most wicked, most backward Nigerians. <laughs> they can pray. You see, but their prayer beneath it is nothing. There is no altar of real love. There is no love. You know, I was talking with a group of uh, a minister and somebody, you know, who were talking about the corruption, the, the damage corruption has done to Nigeria, you know, and uh, blah, 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 blah. So one of them was not telling me. It's because of the failure of leadership. Nigeria does not have uh, um, leaders. Nigeria does not have leaders, you know. I think Nigeria has leaders. Nigeria will not be like this. I said, I agree. I agree. You see, I said that I agree quietly. So the person thought, you know, the, the two of them thought, ah, uh, yes, AVJ is in, is, in, is in line with this thing. So when they finish, I said, can I say something? They said, yes. I said, the truth is that the problem with Nigeria is not the problem of leadership. You know? One of them looked at me and said, he said, that's the thing. That's the thing. This man, you think you are the only one that knows everything. I didn't say I know everything. Can't I contribute? Nigerian problem is not the question of leadership at this point. The problem of Nigeria and Nigerians right now is lack of love. There is no love in this nation. There is no love in Christianity in Nigeria. Love. Okay, let's even say not Christianity. Just for ordinary people. Whether you are a Muslim, idol worshiper, everybody. There is no human love. We have no human compassion. There is no love, no compassion. In Nigeria, hey. Nigeria, this is in Nigeria that dog eat dogs. If you know what I mean. There is no love. There is no, no, nothing called love. Among Christians... There's no love. That's why you see that even in church service, in church, in a particular church where they have 50,000 members, when they close service, a man comes to church with his new Range Rover, with his Rolls Royce. He sees his church members at the bus stop under the scourging sun waiting to take transport, to take bus. You know, yet there's no bus. And he is the only one in the car. He can't give them a ride. You know why? The car is too, is too expensive for a member of the body of Christ to come into. Where is his love? He has no love. There's no love in his heart. There's no love. There is no love. The, have you seen ministers? Their churches, some, some, I, I'm going to be very blunt, you know. So, some ministers have 50,000 members. 30,000 members. God has blessed them with aircraft, with things. Have you seen how much their schools, their university cost? Their church members cannot send their children to those universities. Yet, majority of the money for those universities and those schools are from the offerings and the tithe. And then go and tell the man of God that this school is too expensive. Why don't you subsidize it? His reaction will, will drive you out of town. There is no love. Love is absent in Christian practice in Africa. There is no love. There is no love. It's only in Nigeria you see churches. Thousands. With 50,000 members. There is no free hospital. The church cannot do a general hospital. That is free for everybody. Free. General hospital. You will be amazed. If you go and suggest that to any man of God. The way he will get angry. You see the reason is because. He is not living from love. He is not living from love. You, you see it. Eh? A man can be preaching. Let me tell you something. Let me open your eyes right now. A man can be preaching. 
yet it doesn't have love. Those messages are not of love. So the Bible said, even if you have to speak the truth, he said you must speak the truth in love. L let, let love be the what powers the teaching. Not hatred. Not anger. Not bitterness. He said, speaking the truth in love. Look, look at Look at this, look at what he said. He said, "If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love," he said, "I am only a resounding gong and a uh, clinging cymbal." Are you seeing that? Watch this, verse two. Verse two says, "If I have the gift of prophecy, I can prophesy a lot. I mean, this prophesy all kinds of prophesy, prophecy, and can fathom." all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have a faith that can move mountains but have not love he said i am nothing nothing as far as god is concerned he's looking at a man that is not walking right that is not living right yet he's prophesying yet he can teach bible yet he has the largest crowd but he is not demonstrating love. He's not walking in love. And I've told you I'm going to be very bold because my heart is really um, my heart is really troubled about the way everybody, the direction everybody is going. Go to, go, go to some churches. Everybody is praying that their enemy should die. That somebody should die. Their father-in-law should die. Their mother-in-law should die. Their sister should die. Their brother should die. Their friend should die. Their husband should die. Their wife should die. Their parents should die. Everybody. And the man of God is, is urging them on. Any man in your father's house, blah, 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 blah. Let them die now. Prayer. You will not come and see, see, see hatred and anger. Hey, die, die, die. You see, that's why majority of these people that pray like that, go and look at them. They have no joy. They have no joy. There's no joy. They, they can't express joy. You know? And they wonder why things are not working. The Bible said, he that does not walk in love has been surrounded with darkness. The darkness means the powers of evil. So those darkness will contend with him. Whatever he wants God to do for him, the thing will not, will not work. It won't work. I'm going to show you in the Bible. If you don't choose to walk in love, you will struggle. I'm telling you. The devil will mess you up big time. Will mess up the person big time. I'm telling you. Your heart and life should be powered by love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at the next verse, verse 3. My mom will put verse 3. The Bible says, If I give all I possess to the poor, are you saying that that's religion? If I try to practice religion, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, he said, I gain nothing. There's not going to be any reward from God to you. Go to our churches. Go to many of our churches. Everybody is suspecting each other. There's no love. And you will see them dance. When the man of God preach about dancing here, he said, when your praise go up, then the blessing will come down. Oh yeah, let your praise and your dance. Let you, and then you will see people dancing. Nigerians are so gullible. Very gullible people. They will start dancing, dance, dance, dance. And they are sweaty. Because as they are dancing, they are praising God. Something good, blessing must come down. What is the blessing? He's going to buy a car. What is the blessing? He's going to buy a house. What is the blessing? He's going to get a new job. Is that a blessing? Is that a blessing? Are Muslims not buying cars? Are Muslims not building houses? Are Muslims not getting jobs? These people are so gullible and so... Look, 
A lot of people are so gullible now. That's why when, when I see some of these, hear some of these messages that are preached in churches, I used to ask myself, do these people understand what Christianity is all about? Do they have an idea of what a man of God is preaching? To those 50,000 members, he's saying God in the next three days, he's going to show himself to you as God. He's going to bless you now. The Lord will bless you now. The, what is the blessing? What is the blessing? That you are going to have 100 million naira in your bank account. That's the blessing. Get out. Dan Gote is not born again. He has more than 100 million naira in his bank account. You see, having money is not a blessing. Buying a car is not a blessing. Building a house is not a blessing. Oh, Jesus. Let me even make it difficult for you. To be able to sleep and wake up in the morning is not a blessing. God has set some things in motion as part of his finished work from the foundation of the wall. You see, I have a dog in my house. I have two dogs. They are both female. So we got a male. We got a male. The male came into the house. Within one week, that male slept with one of them. You know? So that one became pregnant. This one that got pregnant is very restless. It's a restless dog. Very restless. The name of this one is called Fearless. Because it can't attack anything or anything. But very restless. This dog that is restless, always everywhere, pursues everything and anything. As soon as this dog delivers her puppies, she stops running around. You know, one day, I went to where she and her puppies were. She just, she was hearing them making noise. Mm -hmm. She went back there, laid down, and those puppies smelled her and came to, stop, to start breastfeeding. And she stayed there for them to suck, to breastfeed. This God is too much. The mother instinct just kicked in. You know, I sat down and, I'm, and the scripture was going through my mind. Truly, God has finished all his works. Nobody needs to teach my dog to take care of her puppies. Now, the other dog that they used to play together, she did not allow that other dog to near those puppies. Because she's afraid she might kill, the, kill them. The mother instinct just set in kicked in. Look, God has set things in place. That's why he's not working. God is not working. He's not doing anything. If you sleep, you must wake up. Except something is wrong. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He's, he has set everything in place. Everything is in place. Look, 24 hours, my, my heart is, is pumping blood. Boom, 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 boom. My heart will keep pumping until my last day on earth. My, from the day I came out, before I even came out of my mother's womb, my heart it's been pumping blood non-stop. It's it, God has set it so the heart should pump blood. And unconsciously, even when I sleep, my heart is still pumping. My heart never goes on holiday, never takes a break. That's the only part of my body that never at any time, including you, never goes on a break. The day a person's heart goes on a break, the person is gone. Are you seeing what I'm saying? God has set everything that he needs to do in place. Everything by God is in place. That you will succeed is in place. It is not your prayer. Oh God, help me to succeed. Oh God, help me to succeed. I must succeed. I must. In Saudi Arabia, they're not praying like that. Yeah, they are successful. Have you been to Dubai? Go and see how Dubai looks like. An Islamic nation. Yet yeah, Nigeria, they're always doing night vigil. And they're not successful. As far as God is concerned, he has put everything that needs to be put in place. He's put them in place. That's why God is no more working. Whether you like it or not, the sun is there. Yet the earth rotates around it. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He has set all things in place. That's why God is no more working. He's not doing anything. Oh God, come down. Do it. Do it for me. Do it for me. Fight my battle. He said, I'm not doing that. I'm not, do I'm not doing any battle. Which battle? If God comes down truly and fights battle for anybody, 
I doubt that God is the Jehovah God, is the real God. That's not a real God. That's an evil God. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Don't you get it? Even our faith. My mommy put it in King James. First John chapter 5, in verse number 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Once you live by faith, victory is unlocked to manifest for you. Because victory has been won by Jesus Christ. God has put victory in place. That's why Jesus has said, I am not unto you. At, at the tomb of Lazarus, he was telling the sisters, have I not told you that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. So the glory of God is activated to manifest on behalf of anybody who is a believer, who will believe. Not the person who is crying. Believe. Believers. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on me. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. God is not going to come down to fight for you. Even Satan. Look, let me tell you. I'm not talking about even witches and wizards. Uh, covens and the powers of darkness. Papi water, mami water. Uh, satanic spirit. Um, I'm, not, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about Satan himself. The devil himself. The prince of demons. Of, of satanic workings. Himself. The Bible said if you resist him. Steadfast in the faith. He said he will flee. He didn't say you should come and fight with him. Don't you get it? Victory for us is institu uh, God has institutionalized victory. He has worked his work. God has worked his work. He said, but victory will be activated once faith is released, demonstrated. It's like a woman cannot be pregnant unless she sleeps with a man. He said, he said, it's a natural law. God has set it. Except there is something wrong. Are you seeing what I'm saying? When a man sleeps with a woman, naturally she becomes pregnant. He's not going to say, Father, I'm about to sleep with my husband. Uh, Father, I'm about to sleep with my wife. Uh, I don't know whether this will result to pregnancy. So whether I should use uh, contraceptive or not. No, 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 no. It's a law. It's a law that God has put concerning nature. God has finished his work. The same thing for Christianity. The reason you are fighting endless battles and expending so much energy is because you have refused to live by faith. The just shall live, shall live, shall live by faith. If you want to live, that means nothing should cut off your living. Nothing should severe your living. Nothing should restrict your living. He said you must, you must, you must Operate by faith. Act by faith. I don't care whether you, you pray 12 midnight or not. You know, because there are some ministers, they are glorifying praying at a specific time. 12 midnight prayer is the most powerful prayer. Look at an unbeliever. That's an unbeliever talking. That's a confused man that is talking. Meanwhile, the scripture said to pray always. And pray that always in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Because there's no time. There's no time for a child of God, for the new creation in Christ. Time does not govern him. Whether 12 midnight or 2 a.m. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Somebody say, uh, you are sleeping by 4 a.m. When Muslims are awake already. And they have chanted things into the atmosphere. Who cares, man? Before I went to bed, I went to bed by faith. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whether they woke up by 3 or by 4 or by 6 a.m., it doesn't matter. I went to bed by faith, trusting in Jesus, knowing that what I've committed into his hands is able to keep it. Being confident of this very thing. Christianity is the easiest thing. I'm telling you. Woo, glory be to God. Christianity is the simplest thing. The easiest life to live. You know, devoid of, you know, embarrassing 
and humiliating traditions. You know, but these traditions, these all kinds of burdens have been injected into Christianity by men who have no understanding of what Christianity is all about. They have no understanding. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to say that. They have no understanding. Alright. So watch this. Thank you Lord Jesus. The Bible said very clearly. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 14. NIV translation. And mommy, let's quickly, you know. Let's quickly put this together. Put this in it. Please, I need you to press the share button. If you look at your Facebook right now. On the left side, there is a share button. Press that share button. We need to deliver our people. When I mean our people, Christians, believers, needs to be helped. Oh, Jesus. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, NIV translation, look at what it says. We know that we have passed. We have passed from death to life. We have crossed. That's, the, that's what it means to be born again. Death cannot do us anything. Now, the word death here does not necessarily mean that the person ceases to exist physically. No. It, it includes that, you know, I try something, the thing will not work. The powers of darkness will come, come and sit down on my desire, for my desire not to come to pass. He said, I've passed from that level. I'm not more in that realm. I'm not in that realm. I don't care how many witches are in my village. They can't sit down on my prosperity. So I can't remember me praying, Father, in the name of Jesus. Anybody, wherever they are, sitting down on my prosperity, let God punish them. <laughs> Religion is a terrible thing, I'm telling you. I can't remember me praying that. You know why? Look, is it? We know. It's a knowing. There is a knowing that we have passed from death into life. The realm uh, the new creation is. The life the new creation has. Nothing works to our disadvantage. Everything works together for our good. If you look at me, I say, you don't want to be my friend no more. Say goodbye. Goodbye. God bless you. You're not wanting to be my friend no more. Does not change anything for me. As a matter of fact, it's God that is allowing you to excuse me so I can move forward. Because it's possible that you are a negative energy around me. Are you seeing that? I said, help us with money to do ministry. You say you don't want to give. Don't worry about it. We're not offended. We're not angry. Keep your money. It just shows that you're not the one the Holy Ghost wants to use. That's why I don't understand why people will be angry with their uncle. My uncle, he, he doesn't want to help me. Father, shame my uncle. Shame my uncle. Look, what is this? You're no longer walking in love. And you don't understand the life of faith. And so, the devil is making a mess of you. Why do you have to make your uncle your, the supplier of your need? Why do you have to think that your, your uncle should become your enemy because he didn't meet your need? The Bible didn't say your uncle will meet your need. He said God will meet your need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Philippians 4.19, that's what he said. Now, watch this. He says, we know that we have passed from death to life because... We have crossed. Death can't hold us back. He can't draw us back. He cannot afflict us. He can't look. The work of man cannot die. It's not possible. He can be challenged, yes. There can be setbacks, yet, yes. But it will never die. I've passed from that realm into life. He said, because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. The reason things will work for you unhindered apart from your faith is that you are walking in love. Anytime you start praying over one particular decision, I mean over one particular desire, over one particular thing, and the, the prayer is becoming a body, a fight and fight, a fight and fight, a fight and fight, you need to stop. Step back and check. Are you walking in love? Because once you are not walking in love, death comes in to romance that person. That's why the Bible said, 
husband, you and your wife, you should agree, love each other, work in agreement. Otherwise, your prayers will be hindered. You will just be praying for something and not seeing it. Are you seeing it? That means the power of prayer is not continuous, continuous prayer. It's you and your wife to just agree, love each other, and then things will start happening. Oh God, I was born for this truth in the name of life. Amanayaga, Egwege, see Bible. He didn't say you should do more prayer. He said you should love. He said the day you got born again, you have escaped death. I'm not just talking about physical dying or spiritual, di spiritual death, which is separation from God. You have escaped being the one that will touch something and the thing will not work. You get into a business and the business will now die, will fail. He said you have escaped that. You have escaped that realm of oppression, of living in life. How can you be involved with somebody and the thing does not work? You say you have escaped that. The only reason that will still come back to start occurring is when you are not walking in love. If you do not yield to love, whatever association you get into, whatever relationship you get into, it will be scattered. It will die. Because death will make a mess of it. And you know death is the enemy of God. So if you want your relationship to work, you want your association to work, you want... So, so some people, it's not that God is not giving them partners. The, the idea is that they are not working in love. They are looking for what to get. They are looking for how to push their opinion. Why must what you get or your opinion be what drives you instead of love? That's why death comes in and scatters this thing. Are you seeing what I'm saying? And I have scripture for all these things. Let me show you some more. Let me show you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Put King James. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Let me show you this. Watch this. So you see, things not happening quickly. It's not that the devil is so powerful. Our Christian victory on a daily basis is tied directly to walking in love living by faith are you seeing it look at it no 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 first john sorry first john chapter 2 verse 9, verse 9 to 11 everybody look at this Woo, my time is fast spent first john chapter 2 look at it he that said he does anybody that says a child of god any christian that says he is he is in the light. You are born again. And hates his brother. That Christian is in darkness. Even until now. If you say you are free from the works of the devil. And you cannot be molested by the powers of darkness. And yet, you are walking and living in hatred of your fellow man. He said, the person is lying. That's why you see that. That's why you see some people's health. They're falling apart. They are health. They are always having disappointments. If you don't know how to walk in love, I'm very sorry. You will experience a lot of satanic works or walkings. I'm sorry to say that. The devil likes it when you don't walk in love because he knows, eh? the devil knows that the absence of the walk in love, it is the absence of God in that condition or situation. Did you get that? Anytime you refuse to walk in love, you are deliberately making God absent in that your condition, your relationship, your desire, your business, your expectation. Are you seeing that? For he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. He doesn't know that God is love. So if you want God to be in a place, love, walk in love, you have just brought God there. Are you seeing that? <laughs> 
I will, I'm going to close with that book. Before I close, watch this. My mommy put verse 10. Look at verse 10. Look at this. This is very important. He that loved his brother abided in the light. So, the word light here means things will be, will be working for him. Anybody that is working in love, look, if you are working in love, let them go to the, the deepest covens of witches and wizards and curse you. Do enchantment, divinations against you. No, you are walking in the light. You see, the powers of darkness don't have, they don't like light. I'm talking about spiritual light. You will see that they will come near you. They will never be able to shoot an arrow against you. You will have no need to start panicking and doing night VG. I'm telling you. Look at it. He that loveth his brother abided in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. You will never be stranded. You will never be stranded if you are walking in love. That's why in most of the churches today, you hardly hear teachings, preachings on love. Because the devil has invaded the church. He's surrounding the majority of the churches and believers. That's why they don't talk about love. So they talk about revenge, fight, Battle, destruction, war, tear down. That's all they do now in churches. They don't build. And then when they finish all that, they, they now come and build physical building. And yet the people are stressed, frustrated. They can't understand. He said, if you are walking in love, there will never be an occasion for you to stumble, for, 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 for you to be stranded. You are in a relationship, you didn't ask her. No, you can't be walking in love and the thing will happen. If you have a relationship and the thing is scattered, it's because you are not walking in love. I'm telling you. Somebody is not walking in love in that relationship. Apart from that, you can't. Not walking in love will, will affect your physical body. To affect your body. Because you will keep exp the person will keep experiencing disappointment, failures, hatred, all kinds of things. And guess what? Those are emotional energies that damages one's self. So next verse is quickly, verse eleven. Look at that. this is Bible, verse eleven. But he that hated his brother is in darkness. Yeah, he's talking about a Christian. A Christian is in darkness. I don't understand. How can a Christian be in darkness when he is supposed to be the light in darkness? You see, he has decided to cover his own light. How do you cover your light from shining? Despair, from despair, uh, despair, uh, um, I do, what, what, what does English word have? To dispel darkness, the works of evil, powers of Satan from you is when you refuse to walk in love. And walk out in darkness, he's not only in darkness, he's walking in darkness. That means all he will experience is what all those negativities can prov provide. Failure, disappointment, sickness, you know, all those things. That's what, because that's what you'll be walking in, that's what you'll be experiencing. He said, and knoweth not whither he goeth. Oh, yeah. Because that darkness has blinded his eyes. The word eyes here means his, his mind. You got to walk in love. Walk in love. I've told you. Oh God, let my husband succeed. Let my husband succeed. Any power that is stopping my husband in the name of Jesus. Oh God, destroy them. You don't need that. That's, it's a religious activity. That is a religious spirit that is operating. You and your husband walk in love. There will be nobody that can hinder your husband and what he's doing. Have you not read it in the book of Peter? It says so that your prayer is not hindered. It, it, look, <laughs> oh God. If you don't want your prayer to be in it, walk in love. Just by sitting down, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for my husband's contract. Let it go through in Jesus' name. I immediately, eh, because you are a light, light will shine in the path of that contract.
You will just say that everything is working well. But if you are not working in love, he said your prayer will be hindered. Who is hindering the prayer? You think it's God? It's not God. Look at it. He said the person that is not working in love eh, is in darkness and is walking in darkness. And he cannot see. Because darkness has blinded the person. Are you seeing that? As a roundup, I like to say this to everybody. Please, I beg you. If you can't remember anything I have said since, I beg you in Jesus' name to remember this. There is no way in the Bible as a New Testament believer in Christ Jesus, there is no way it is written that you should expect to be loved. No way. See, Bible, I was born for this thing in my life. There is no way you are, expect, you are, you are told to expect to be loved. Uh, I was expecting that he would show me love. No, there's nothing like that. There is no scripture for it. God does not want you, as a child of God, as a born again Christian, to go about expecting that people should love you. No. No. Rather, you are the one God expects to love everybody. Are you seeing him? You see, but the ignorant, because of the ignorance in the church, it has been reversed. If you look at me with bad eye, you are evil. Why are you looking at me with bad eye? You are supposed to love me. You see? That's not what God says. Whether you look at me with bad eye or not, I am supposed to love you. There is, I'm going to say it again, and I stand to be challenged. You can't find anywhere in the scripture where God says you as a person, as an individual, should expect to be loved. We are to love one another. But you should not expect me to love you. I should not expect you to love me. But what God put in his word for me and for you is that I should love you. You should love me. I am not supposed to expect it from you, but I'm, I'm expected by God to give it. Are you seeing that? In Romans 13, glory be to God in heaven. You know, NLT translation, my mommy. In verse 8, Romans 13, verse 8. Please, this is very important as I close this teaching. Watch this. In Romans 8, uh, Romans 13, 8, the Bible said, Owe nothing to anyone. Don't owe anybody anything except for your obligation. To love one another is an obligation that I have to love you. God demonstrated that in Romans 5. He loved us when we were unlovable. God did not expect love from us for him. Because we can't love him. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. It was not possible for us to love God. So God in his own love moved demonstrated commended his love towards us remember john 3 16 for god so loved the world so romans 5 said god commended demonstrated his love towards us while we were yet sinners god did not demand that we should love him it was after his love has rescued us he now put his own love in our heart so that we can love him god wants you to become a lover and not to, I mean, to become a love giver and not a love expecter. Are you seeing that? You owe nobody anything but love. You don't owe anybody anything but love. You are not supposed to owe anybody anything but love. Love even your father. Love your mother. Love your children. Love your wife. Love your husband. You know, people think that it is only the man God says he should love his wife. No. You are, that means you have not read Thessalonians. He said, wives, you love their husband. Because love is of God. Anyway, the character of God will play out in that place. He wants you to love your boss. Your boss may be a devil. Love your boss. Love that person. Use love to win your boss. Leave, use, look, the reason you see that these young people of today, their marriages are not last, lasting anymore. They get married now, they are divorcing, and then it's becoming like a fashion. Yet, they are sorrowed. They are pained. 
they are they are in, they are, they are, in, uh, uh, they are living a, a life of loneliness. That's why you, you see all kinds of sex toys being sold, and so people are carrying it with pride. What are you doing when there's a fellow human being you can show love to? I know that some people, when you love them, of course, I'm not oblivious to that fact. When you love some people genuinely, some people all they just want to do is to take advantage of you. They, they can't they can't love because the things that the world called love is not love. Are you seeing that? What the world called love is lost. The Bible declares that very clearly. He says it is lost. That's what they call love. They just want to take advantage, satisfy their own selfish uh, um, cravings, desires. That's what they call love. That's not love, you know. But we are expected to still love them anyhow. You know why? We have the nature of God. And the nature of God is love. God is love. And God shed his love abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So the love of God is what we are born of. We are born of love. We have God's DNA. We, we, we don't look for love. We don't try to generate love. We are born of love. Our nature is a nature of love. I wish I had time to break this thing down. It's because, because my time is fast spent. So that's why I'm rushing it now. You see, our nature is a nature of love. So God put his love in our heart. How do I know? He said the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost that is given to us. So if you have the spirit of God in you, you have the love of God in you. Are you seeing that? So God said, I put my love in you so that you can become a lover. Love. Reach out. Stop being aggressive. Stop, you know, st stop being hard. Stop doing as if Look, I'm angry. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not happy right now. I'm. I'm sad right now. You know, I. I don't. I don't like this. No. 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 He said, "You owe love at every time. Otherwise, darkness will set in. You know the meaning of darkness. He said, the person will walk in darkness. That means the person will experience disappointment, failure, pain, shame, and all that. That's darkness. That is darkness. But once you choose to love, even if they don't love you back in return, you love." Because God is love. God will never be disadvantaged. Never. And do you know, even people who do not love, they want lovers around them. They seriously want pe lovers, people who love around them. I'm talking about people who don't love at all, who like to take advantage of people. They want lovers. Have you tried animals, including dogs? Show a dog love. It becomes your best friend. You know, I was watching a documentary. A man got a goat. The hardest thing to love is goat. Because goat is goat. As a matter of fact, the two hardest animals to love is goat and pig. No matter how you, you bath a pig, it will still go back into the mud. I saw a man a kitty goat, if, if whether that's what they call it, a young goat, poured so much love into the goat. Do you know what this goat does? When this man goes to work, yeah, there's a bus, there's a bus stop almost in front of his house. This goat knows exact time the bus will get to that bus stop and that the man will be in the bus. The goat will run to the bus stop and sit down. Once he sees the bus coming, he will start shooting. Meh, 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 meh. Once the man comes down, the goat, meh, meh, until the man carries him. I said, goodness me. I've never seen this before. I watch another one again. A chicken. Chicken. This man showed this chicken so much love. That the chicken knows when the man will close from work and get home. Once is a particular time. You know, time is built inside chicken. You know, chicken all chicken have inbuilt time. That's why they have they have the time to crow. 4 a.m. and all those, you know, time. This chicken will come out of the backyard, will come from the back of the house and come and stay in front of the house. And then once he's getting to the time that the man will come, he will walk straight to the junction and stay there. Spread, uh, you know, the whatever, the wings. He's waiting for the man. Once the chicken sees the man coming, 
the chicken out of excitement would roll, 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 run to, back to the front of the house, run back to the junction until the car comes and the man will stop. Open the door, the chicken will go into the car and then him and the chicken will drive to the house. Love is of God. There is nothing that will never respond to love, no matter how hard the thing is. I've seen a man in Saudi Arabia that showed a lion so much love that this lion is ready to die for the man. Love is of God. Love is of God. If you want to live triumph, victoriously, consistent victory, victorious life, walk in love and live by faith. In Jesus' name. I love you and God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we will not close this teaching without asking you to give. So I'm going to ask you to give right now. You know, let love flow in your heart and do it by faith. You know, let it be by love through faith in the name of Jesus. Are you getting this? Very important. Very important. Take up an offering. Use this your phone or your iPad or your laptop, whatever device you are using right now. Use it to give. Don't shut your heart when it comes to giving. Give, let love flow from your heart, especially to the work of God. Amen. Let love flow. Help us to preach this gospel to a wider audience in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. All right. Now, if you are in Nigeria, you can use our Zenith Bank and it's 1001488167. Or you can use our Access Bank 143337574. Or Guarantee Trust Bank, 001-686-4121. But if you're outside of Nigeria, you're in Canada, America, in UK, in uh, Europe, in Australia, you know, whether you're in Dubai, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, or China, or in South Africa, Kenya, or Ghana, wherever you are in the world, you can use our international giving platform. It's Guarantee Trust Bank. You can download it on Play Store, Guarantee Trust Bank. And the SWIFT code is... G-T-B-I-N-G-L-A. And the account, US dollar account is 001-686-4145. The Great British Pound account is 001-686-4169. The Euro account is 001-686-4179. Let the Lord use you to be a blessing even to us as a ministry, you know, to help us to keep these teachings going. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the Lord bless your giving, multiply your seeds so in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'm so excited. You know, look, if this teaching has been a blessing to you or has done any good in your heart at all, please share it to somebody. You know, let it, let somebody hear it. You know, I'm telling you, hopefully if the Lord permits me, we'll probably do a part two of it. In the name of Jesus. Until I see you again, this is ABJ. And guess what I'm about to do? Glory be to God. And I'm doing it in love. I'm signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.